Hello, in this video, we will be discussing how do we calculate the arithmetic mean and how do we calculate the standard deviation if the data given to us is a group data. While looking at the calculation of the standard deviation, we will also be looking at the calculation of the variance. Now first, the calculation of the mean. The mean is usually represented with x bar. So the mean x bar equals summation of the frequency multiplied by the midpoint divided by the number of observations. So this means we take the sum, which is sigma, we take the sum of the frequency midpoint. So we take the sum of all the products of the frequency midpoint. So this means to get Fm, we already have F given to us in the question. Now we need to fill up the M. M. The M stands for midpoint. And once we have the M, then we can find Fm. That is the frequency multiplied with the midpoint. So, how do we find the midpoint? The midpoint M is calculated by saying the lower limit plus the upper limit divided by 2. Applying this, for this first row here, the class is 20 up to 30. So, the midpoint equals the lower limit is 20 plus the upper limit which is 30 so 20 plus 30 divided by 2 20 plus 30 will give us 50 and then we divide it by 2 that means the answer is 25 so here the midpoint is 25 for the first row next the midpoint of the second row the second row is 30 up to 40 so that means the lower limit is 30 plus the upper limit is 40 divided by 2 30 plus 40 is 70 divided by 2 that will be equal to 35 so the midpoint here is 35 the next row the class is 40 up to 50 so the lower limit is 40 plus the upper limit, that's 50, divided by 2. 40 plus 50 is 90, divided by 2, that's equal to 45. So the midpoint here is 45. The next row, the class is 50 up to 60. So the lower limit is 50 plus the upper limit, that's 60, divided by 2. 50 plus 60 is 110, divided by 2, that's equal to 55. So midpoint here is 55. And for the last row, the class is 60 up to 70. So the lower limit is 60, plus the upper limit, that's 70, divided by 2. So 60 plus 70 is 130 divided by 2, that's equal to 65. So the midpoint here is 65. Now that we have gotten the midpoint column, the next column we'll be focusing on is the FM column. The FM column simply means multiply the frequency with the midpoint. Applying this, this means for the first row, we say 1 times 25, that is 25. The next row, we say 15 times 35, that is 525. The next row, we say 22 times 45, that is 990. The next row, we say 8 times 55. That is 440. And the last row, we say 4 times 65. And that is 260. 
and this completes the fm column the next thing we need to do is we take the sum of the fm that is we add 25 to 525 then the sum added to 990 then the sum added to 440 then the sum added to 260. when we do this the sum is going to be 2240. this means the mean x bar equals summation fm is this is this 2240 so 2240 divided by n n represents the number of observations usually the n is stated in the question but since the question is given to us in this format we have to figure out the n ourselves this n is nothing but summation f that is when you add up all of your frequency the value that you get is your number of observations so we say 1 plus 15 the sum added to 22 the sum added to 8 the sum added to 4 when we do this we will get a sum of 50 so this means the n is 50 thus the mean equals 2240 divided by 50 so simplifying x bar which is the mean equals 44.8 and this is the mean next we need to look at the calculation of the standard deviation the standard deviation is usually represented with small letter s small letter s which is the standard deviation equals square root and inside the square root we have sigma the summation of f multiplied with m minus x bar square divided by n minus 1 So how do we apply this formula to get the standard deviation a step by step breakdown? First, we need to figure out this part here. We need to figure out m minus x bar. And m minus x bar stands for the midpoint minus the sample mean. Once we figure this out for each class, we move on to the second step we find m minus x bar square we take the square of m minus x bar so we take the square for each class and then the third step we find the frequency f multiplied with m minus x bar square so we simply take the frequency and we multiply it with this step two. So we have F multiplied with M minus X bar square. Once we have this, the fourth step is to simply apply this. So we get the whole numerator. The whole numerator is determined by this sigma. That is, we simply take the sum of the step three. So we take the sum of f multiplied with m minus x bar square. Let's start with the first step. The first step is m minus x bar. So we come to the table here. We write m minus x bar. So that is the midpoint m minus the sample mean. We do that for each class level so for the first class equals the m in the first class is 25 minus the x bar which is the sample mean 44.8 so 44.8 again what we did was 
for the first class the m is 25 minus the sample mean which is 44.8 and this is equal to minus 19.8 so this means for the first to go we have minus 19.8 moving on to the next row row number two the m is 35 so we have 35 minus the x bar which is 44.8 that's equal to minus 9.8 so in the second class level we have minus 9.8 moving on to the third row the m on the third row is 45 minus the x bar which is 44.8 that's equal to 0 0.2 so the third row is 0 0.2 the fourth row the midpoint is 55 minus the mean 44.8 subtracting this we have equals 10.2 so here we have 10.2 and for the last row the midpoint is 65 minus the sample mean that's 44.8 taking the difference we have 20.2 so here 20.2 and this completes the calculation of m minus x bar next we move on to step 2 which is to calculate m minus x bar square this simply means the answer we have on this column here, the answer we have on this m minus x bar column, we simply take the square. That is m minus x bar square. For the first row, the m minus x bar is minus 19.8. We simply take the square of minus 19.8. The square of minus 19.8 is 392.0. Next, we take the square of minus 9.8, that is 96.04. Next, we take the square of 0 0.2, and that is 0 0.04. Next, we take the square of 10.2, 104.04. And last, we take the square of 20.2, and that is 408. Point zero four, and this completes the calculation of the m minus x bar square column now we move on to step theory step theory is simply the multiplication of the frequency and m minus x bar square column that is we multiply at each level the frequency with m minus x bar square so this means we have f multiply m minus x bar square. So for the first row, the f is 1 multiplied with 392.04. That will give us a product of 392.04. The next row, the frequency is 15 and the m minus x bar square is 96.04 so the products will be equal to 1440.60 next the frequency is 22 and the m minus x bar square is 0.04 so when we multiply these two we have 0.88 next the f is 8 and the m minus x bar square is 104.04 this will give us a product of 832.32 and last row 4 times 408.04 that will give us 1632.16 
and thus we complete the third step which is f multiplied with m minus x bar square now on to the fourth step which is simply to take the sum of f multiplied with m minus x bar square that is we add 392.04 to 1440.60 the sum we add it to 0 0.88 then we add the sum to 832.32 and then we add the sum to 1632.16 when we do this we will have a sum of 4298 now that we found the fourth step this means we have found the numerator in this formula now we can calculate the standard deviation by saying s equals square root the sum of f multiplied with m minus x bar square is this value that we have here it is 4298 so square root of 4298 divided by n represents the number of observations and as we mentioned while we're calculating the mean we said n is actually summation of your frequency and that is 50. so here we have 50 minus 1 simplifying that equals square root of 4000 298 divided by 49 simplifying that equals square root of 4298 divided by 49 is approximately equal to 87.714 we take the square root of 87.714 that means our standard deviation s equals 9.37 9.37 is the standard deviation now this 87.714 inside this square root is referred to as the variance so the variance which is usually represented with s square equals 87.714 so before you take the square root the answer that this formula gives to you is your variance and then when you take the square root the answer that you have is your standard deviation so this means standard deviation is the square root of the variance and the variance is the square of your standard deviation and this completes the calculation of the arithmetic mean and the standard deviation when we have group data or class intervals hope you found this video helpful if you did please kindly leave it a like and subscribe to the channel see you in another video